A new legislation to deter illegal activities relating to cybercrime and misuse of information was passed in the House of Assembly with amendments on Thursday, March 13. The Computer Misuse and Cybercrime Act 2013 came in response to the misappropriation and misuse of private and confidential information from the BVI in April 2013 when the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, or ICIJ, obtained confidential information on the territory's financial services industry. Premier Dr. Orlando Smith brought the bill to the House and sought to clarify his case for the BVI to join other countries that already have similar legislations in place. We simply subscribe to the common law principle of confidentiality and adhere to a treaty obligation as regards maintaining confidentiality in matters relative to mutual legal assistance, including the exchange of information. This bill is not about which hunting anybody or an attempt to breach the constitutional rights of any person. This bill is not about nothing the press, and press freedom continues to be respected and upheld in this territory. Within the bounds of the law, as is the case with every citizen's right to express himself or herself. The law, which also speaks to the unlawful publication of computer data and child pornography, had stiff penalties of up to $1 million in fines and 20 years imprisonment. Deputy Premier Dr. Ketrick Pickering, while debating the draft Computer Misuse and Cybercrime Act, said he thinks the fines and fees should be reduced but dismisses claims that government is seeking to muzzle the media while stressing the need to upgrade existing legislation to protect the territory. Well, so this piece of legislation, Madam Speaker, this act before this honorable house, understand, does not have provisions that are going to affect the, our people in any negative way. Yes, Madam Speaker, I agree. And I will raise it and, and support any other member who raises it in the committee stage that the fees need to be reconsidered. The fines need to be reconsidered. The penalties need to be reconsidered. I will, I will support that because we're jumping an astronomical height. To where, from where we were to where we are. Now, Madam Speaker, let me pause. Let me pause to say that I understand and appreciate from the technical point of view and the technical experts and those who are on the front line of gathering our industry and our financial services that the, the, the penalties have got to be so severe that they are in themselves a deterrent to anyone who would try to commit crimes of this nature because of, of the magnanimous nature Madam Speaker, of what we are dealing with. Following its first reading on January 13, the proposed act prompted debate across local and international sources who expressed the view that government was seeking to criminalize legitimate free speech. But according to government, the Computer Misuse and Cybercrime Act seeks to provide a comprehensive approach to deterring and punishing illegal activities relating to cybercrime and the misuse of information. At large, Representative Archibald Christian, in his contribution to the debate on the bill, referenced the circulation of defamatory information via cell phones and other cases where people's privacy is violated, among his reasons for supporting the bill. You have to be responsible. Journalists have codes and ethics and guidelines on our which they operate, and they should follow those codes, ethics, and guidelines. And so I am one of those persons that supports freedom of the press. Information to the public is very important. It must be accurate, it must be fair, and it must not, it must not tarnish people's image and reputation. So I want to, to say that when you look at an online publication at, that was on Platinum News on March the 12th. It says NDP bill intends to limit freedom of online media. That's not a fair statement. That is not what the bill is all about. The bill is to protect people from using computers, cell phones, any sort of data material from using that information illegally. 
According to a government press release, the Computer Misuse and Cybercrime Act 2013 is expected to buttress and complement BVI's existing comprehensive suite of laws which conform to highest international standards and best practices as government seeks to promote its vision of the Virgin Islands as an ideal place to work and do business. Education Minister Myra Wawin said the bill includes but is not limited to financial services, noting that the law protects people's private information. You have to look at the other good side of the bill in terms of fundamental freedoms as well. It is promoting your right to privacy. Mm -hmm. The bill is doing that. So we, we cannot forget that in the whole debate and in the whole discussion. I'll give you an example. Because sometimes we don't always appreciate the property, the confidentiality that exists in computers and the data on your computer. And you could imagine that somebody get in your, computer, your, your phone or your computer and go look at your business, look at your picture. Sometimes they have some pictures on there you're not too proud of. And somebody gone in your phone, take your pictures and go send it all about the place. No, no man. Or they go on your Facebook page, they find out your 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 your, your, your password for your Facebook. You got some of them there when you're punching in your numbers, you gotta be careful because they're peeping over your shoulder. And they go in your Facebook, Madam Speaker, and go write things and send all kinds of things on your wall. And people believe that you put it there, when in fact it is not so. Make it worse. You're doing banking now on the internet. 